All right, Shabbat Shalom, my friends, and uh, I, I think we're actually live, and uh, we're, now we're learning how we can do Shabbat live in, in, in a very uh, awkward uh, situation here, so um, anyway, I just wanted to kind of greet everybody and tell you Shabbat Shalom. Uh, for those that are not aware, our internet service, everything is down. Uh, I have no idea how this camera is even looking at you guys right now, but that's okay. Praise God, so it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, hang on one second. I'm not sure which audio this thing is using, and if it's using the audio on my headset thing here, i got to make sure that, uh, that the microphone is where you guys can hear it and not in the wrong place. At any rate, though, today we were going to actually do the teaching on um, on uh, uh, the teenagers, but because we got hacked here and everything was totally knocked off of line for me, uh, I had to postpone that until next week, and I apologize. I've not been able to at least inform you of that, but we have not had internet. Um, our website was knocked offline. Brother Aaron is working on that, and uh, we should be up. Probably, Brother Aaron's talking about about four days, but I would say safely this is the end of the week. Um, and uh, we do have a regular web, I mean, he still has an emergency website up that has basic information on there for you. Because um, yeah, I know some people that give, they, they like to go to the website. So, yes, that's still uh, doable. But trying to get all the information back up the blogs. Uh, uh, my wife, Sister Yana, her blog, because uh, I know she's very active in writing on hers now. Uh, so we should be out back then. Also, we are beginning the the tour this week uh, acr across uh, the Midwest here, and uh, and I'll update you on that. We should have our internet up at home very soon. So I'm trusting uh, God for that. Um, but anyway, let's start this morning. I'd like to read to you a little bit from the Torah. Uh, to do our Torah reading, all this is a little bit difficult because I'm actually in the car. Uh, I did not realize that I could do Shabbat live with my phone. Had I known that, I would have never left the house. But uh, I left the house thinking that the only way I could do Shabbat live was with um, was with the uh, with the computer. So I came to a, a restaurant that has Wi-Fi, and I'm in their parking lot. But unfortunately, even that wasn't strong enough. So. Um, I tell you what, just for the sake of, it's easier for me to see this in, uh, in this situation here. Um, let's go back to the Torah and we will start with, um, um, let's start with uh, verse 9 of Genesis, Bereshith Aleph, uh, and the verse Tet, Beyomer Elohim Yakarau Hamaim. Okay, and God said, Let the waters beneath the heavens gather, be gathered together in one area, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And it, and it was yes, actually, literally, if you take it that way, but that's how you translate it, it was so. Okay, and he says here, and God uh, called to the dry land earth and and, uh, and to the gathering of the waters he called seas. Uh, and the Lord God says that it was good. Okay, and God said, let there be grass. Okay, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, herb yielding seed, fruit trees yielding fruit, each after its kind, containing its own seed on the earth, and it was so. 
and the earth brought forth vegetation, herbage yielding seed after its kind, and the trees yielding fruit, each containing its seed after its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning the third day. Now, I didn't finish reading all of that, but let's go ahead and read that as well. Veto, uh, Haaretz desha, desha, osav, mazorez, zara, lamenehu, veets, ose, pri, asha, zaru, bo, haaretz desha, ose, mazorez, zara, min, excuse me, lamina, laminehu, veets, ose, pre, asher, zaru, bo. So, anyway, God bless you again. Shabbat Shalom on this wonderful Shabbat day in Florida. It's miserable always. It's hot. Uh, so, you're probably hearing the car air conditioning here as well. Um, so, you know, today because of not being able to prepare like I wanted to prepare, one of the things that... Um, just to share with you guys is that the Lord Yeshua I can't help but think as, as we know that he says that all things are possible to them that believe and so what I thought I might do is talk to you about divine healing and um, because we've seen when Yeshua was here he would always take in the, with the people and he would come to the different ones and he would tell them, you know, if you can believe, all things are possible. And, um, and I wish I had a specific scripture pulled open for that, but I was really kind of frantic trying to figure out where I was going to get internet this morning when things didn't work. It did, you know, I just ended up trying. I thought, well, maybe this would work on the phone and, of course, found out it does. But... Um, so he says to the people, you know, that all things are possible. We think about times where he'd say, be it according to your faith, be it, be it, be it unto you. And uh, um, your faith has saved you. So many times we find that everything in God's word is dependent upon faith and how we believe God's word. And so there's so many people in the world that have troubles in their body, sickness and and not only sickness, but other issues as well that we believe for. We believe for rain, to, if we're farmers, that God would give us rain, that our crops would grow. And uh, But divine healing is probably one of the ones that people struggle with the most. Because it's easy for us to talk about someone else. It's easy for us to say, you know, uh, like for me, it's easy for me to say to you guys, you know, just oh, only believe God will heal you. And... But until you have actually been the person that's been sick or suffering with something and then really believe God for your healing, it's very difficult to say that to people when, when you know, we're, we're, we're faced with that type of situation, you know. Do, you know how, how do you believe when, when pain is unbelievable? And, uh, and, your, and your whole mind is focused on the issue that you're going through uh, with the pain in your body. And... In some cases, it doesn't seem that though we be praying and we're believing, uh, it seems like it takes forever for God to answer. But one thing that is certain, and every time we look at these stories in the Bible, we find that, in some, like for example, the woman that comes to Yeshua that says in her heart, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I'd be made well. But yet, she had spent her entire living upon the physicians. You know, she had a blood issue and, and she couldn't get it could not get this blood issue remedied, you know, so uh, if we think about it in that light, you know, she spent a long time seeking for healing, and <clears throat> once she got in the presence of Yeshua, then she knew something about this man, if I could just touch his garment. I'll... All right, guys, <clears throat> I just realized, well, one, when the phone rings it cuts us off automatically and secondly uh, I realized too that I did had, didn't have a very good signal at all downstairs so I had to come upstairs uh, so anyway going back into divine healing though um, the one thing in life remember and, and I just share some of these testimonies with you 
in the event that there is those that are sick or are going through things in life that need God's mercy and love. But when, when Jesus would come, when Yeshua himself comes, the love, there's a presence of love. It's not, it's not <clears throat> goosebumps, it's not sensations, it's not, um, you know, sometimes when you feel like your hair is going to stand on the top of your head, it's nothing like that. It is an incredible love that is a love that is beyond anything that I have ever seen in this life. Uh, that's what it's like when He comes. And when He comes, I've never seen it fail yet. If I'm praying for someone and His presence is there, that the person is not healed. And, and I know they are. There, there's no, without doubt, I know they're healed. And of course, I've prayed for other people that I didn't feel that type of presence, and they would be healed later. You know, and guess what it is, because I, I, I can't tell you how that works. Uh, it seems to me it's when, when the individual that you're speaking to, when their faith, when they believe God, that's what brings the presence of God. Uh, I know myself, it's just like with me. If I'm praying for someone, it's not me that causes the person, that causes Yeshua to come on the scene. It's that person I'm praying for. And a lot of times, the people that you pray for have no idea that they have the faith that they have to draw His presence. You know, for me, it's just I know that when He's near, that's the time to pray for Him. And one thing I was sharing earlier, but it had already cut off, so I hope it stays on this time, was a friend of mine, Shane, had invited me, uh, him and his wife, to a Sunday school class they taught for children and to pray uh, or not to pray, but to come and speak to these children. And so I took, the, I took up uh, this, this meeting, and when I did, I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to say to these like, eight-year-old kids? What am I going to say to eight-year-old kids? I, I have no idea what to say to these guys. You know, but <clears throat> I began to talk to them about different children in the Bible, like Isaiah, when the Lord first called him. David, you know, he was raised up of God to, to deliver uh, Israel, to be the king of Israel. I slays Goliath as just a, a young boy, maybe 16 years old. And, and so I talked about different children of the Bible. And in the process of doing so, I knew that Shane's wife had cancer. And what I was doing is I was trying to get the children's faith built in Yeshua to such a place where I knew it would draw him. And so I kept talking to them. And when they got, it was probably a group of a dozen of these children, they really, the, 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 the children that were there, they got so involved in this little meeting that we were having, and they got so excited that their little faith began to touch Yeshua. And suddenly, I felt Him walk in the room. And it's not something you see, but that presence of love came in the room. And when it did, it's so hard to control the tears because the love is so overwhelming. And even the people in the room, anytime that's ever happened, I've always had the people in the room tell me, oh my gosh, I've never felt nothing like that before. And um, so I said to the little children, I said, would you guys like to touch Yeshua today? Would you like, of course I said to them, Jesus, I said, would you like to touch Jesus? And oh, they would raise their little hands up because I told them their little arms was eagle wings, you know. And they raised up their arms and they were so happy to know that. And I said, we could do that today. And I asked Brother Shane to bring his wife up. I said, you know, Miss, and I forget her name now, but uh, uh, I said, this sister here is very sick. I said, and she's going to have to go to the hospital soon. And I didn't say what was wrong with her, you know. I said, but you know what? I said, she wouldn't have to go. I said, you little guys, I said, you have the gift to touch Jesus. I said, and he's already here because you're believing in him. I said, that's what you're feeling right now. And oh, they were so excited. And so Shane's wife comes up, she's crying, he's crying. And all the little children I have, them, I said, now you come around her. I said, and I want all of you to put a little wing on her. And I said, take your other wing. I want you to raise your other wing up to Yeshua. I says, and when you do, I said, I'm going to pray for her. I said, he's going to hear. I said, you pray with me. And I said, God will hear your prayers. And so we prayed for her. Afterwards, Shane comes to me, and one of the little boys in that little group there had been born with heart trouble. And he said, Steve, he says, 
they everything they they've done everything they know to do, and he's got such a bad heart. He said, "Could we pray for him as well?" I said, "Sure, brother." And I tell the little children, I said, "Now he's too little for all you guys to get a wing on him." I said, "But I tell you what, you do." I said, "You put one wing on him as you go by. Put your hand, put your wing on him. Raise your other wing up." I said, "I want you to tell Jesus, say, I believe that he's healed. Just say that." And they would go by one by one. They'd touch him, raise her up, their little wing in the air, and say, "Lord, I believe he's healed." And well, a little time went by. Well, actually, that Monday, Shane's wife was due to have the surgery to have the cancer removed. And so I got a call from Shane Monday late morning, and he was crying. And I said, Brother, what's wrong? And he says, Brother Steve, he says, the doctor came out and told me the surgery was a waste of time. He said, we can't find nothing, Shane. He says, and I don't understand it. He said, we, we did everything. We did biopsies of the cancer. We know the cancer was there. He said, but for some mysterious reason, there's nothing in your wife at all. And uh, so he was so happy. And uh, and I didn't see Shane again for another year. And one day he called me up and he said, Brother Steve, he says, I wanted to ask you a favor. He says, you remember that little boy that, 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 that the class prayed for? I said, yes, sir. He said, could you pray for him? He's got pneumonia. He said, but you know what? His parents told me one day that, <clears throat> said, you know, Shane, the strangest thing is. So we keep taking him to the doctor for his heart and everything. And the doctor says, can't find nothing wrong with his heart no more. He said, Rusty, that little boy was totally healed. Now, here's what's interesting. It caused this family to believe so much. They had a daughter with a cleft lip. Her lip would get hung up in her teeth all the time. And so they took, because they had seen God heal his wife, seen God heal the little boy, they believed God, and they prayed for their daughter, and she was due to have surgery to fix her lip, and God healed her lip, and she didn't have to have nothing done to her lip. You see, God is no respective person. And nobody, by the way, nobody's a healer. Never think that anybody's a healer. You know, that's nonsense. God, Christ himself, Yeshua, came and died and paid the price. His stripes is what makes you well. All it is, when people, now the Bible says, you know, anoint them with oil and pray for the sick. Sure, that's just, that's just a, an ordinance for us to do. And sometimes it increases the faith of other people. But it's your faith in what he's already done. Anyway, Pray for us here. We sure need it. We love you guys tremendously. Oh, there's many, 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 many other testimonies. I don't know if, I, if, if you got to hear it or not when I said it, but just to tell you one quick one here before we close. I worked on heavy equipment years ago as far as clearing land. This when I was a young man. And my mother was totally blind. I'm talking about blind as a bat. Black, she didn't see nothing. And one day while I was operating my, my bulldozer clearing land, I heard the Lord speak to me audibly, just like I'm speaking to you now. And he said, pray for your mother's eyes. I stopped my bulldozer and I just started weeping almost uncontrollably. And I said, Lord, it's true. My mother needs to see. That's all I could say. I, I, I was so crying so much I couldn't say anything else. And the strange thing was, when I got to my mother that afternoon, she had 20-20 vision. Imagine that. And by the way, that's what caused my mother to believe that Yeshua was Mashiach. God bless you. Shalom. Wish we could do this longer, but uh, well, you know how the devil's been trying to attack here. But I'm not worried about the devil. He's no match for our God. God bless you. Shalom, shalom. Jew.